Riding on a storm is probably not the first thing on your mind. But as we know, living in the Midwest, weather can turn on a dime, so it's important to be prepared. Today on Powerhouse, we'll take a look at how you can be prepared if a storm hits and what to keep in your storm safety kit. We'll also go through what alarms you need in your home and what to look for. And we'll talk about comfort and safety when a storm strikes. Batten down the hatches. It's time for a stormy powerhouse. In recent years, we've seen an uptick in dramatic storm and weather events occurring in all seasons. Weather patterns can be hard to predict, but they're easy to prepare for. To keep you and your family safe during extreme weather events, you should put together a storm safety kit. Be sure to keep it in an easy to get to place in your house. To make sure you're ready, you'll need to dust it off as seasons change. Now the kit should be filled with the basic items that you and your family need to get you through a situation that could leave you isolated without help or supplies. Let's start with where you should store your kit. The key to an effective safety kit is making sure it includes the necessary resources and it's stored in a safe and accessible place. The container for your kit will depend on how many items you need to store in it and the space available to store it. Backpacks, durable canvas bags, or plastic totes or tubs are all good options to consider. You could even consider both a simple tote for the basics and a backpack for the personal items if you need to grab and go. Your kit should always be easily accessible. Keep in mind that there could be a situation where you need to leave immediately and you'll need to take the kit with you. The best place to store your kit is a central dry space where you would take shelter from a storm such as a basement or interior room or closet. People who've been through ice storms, flooding, tornadoes, or other catastrophic events will tell you that it's important to have essential items with you at all times. Think water, food, medicines. If your ability to secure these items is disrupted due to damage or the power being knocked out, having a supply on hand can be a lifesaver. First, water. One gallon per person is recommended either in actual gallon jugs like this one or equivalent smaller containers. If there's an infant in the household, don't forget the formula and any extra water needed to prepare it. Next, food. Keep enough non-perishable food in your kit to last for a couple of days. Good choices are canned items like tuna, beans, meat, or fruit. Now cans with pop-top lids like this one are really great, but if you can't find those, be sure to tuck in a can opener into your kit as well. Dry cereal, dried fruit, crackers, and granola bars are good shelf-stable items. You can also include peanut butter, high-energy protein bars or snacks, and beef jerky. In addition to your water supply, you could include bottled or canned juice, tea, or instant coffee. And don't forget to include food and water supplies for your pets as needed. While many items are classified as non-perishable, Everything has an expiration date. Drinking water in your kit should be replaced every three to six months. Record expiration dates of food items on a piece of paper and tape it in easy view on the outside of your kit. This will serve as a reminder to rotate out items and replace them with new ones periodically. A great approach is to check the items in your kit every time the seasons change. It's a good time to make sure you have it handy and you might need to update the items based on the seasons too. Now there's nothing worse than being in the dark knowing you have flashlights and not knowing where they are. You'll want to include at least one in your kit with extra batteries. Flashlights or battery powered lanterns are safer and more reliable than candles or oil lamps. Now we rely on our phones for virtually everything. So don't forget to include a portable power bank. There are even solar powered options. First aid supplies such as bandages, antibiotic ointment, and disinfected wipes should make their way into your kit. A book or reference card on first aid basics might be helpful in case of an injury. Now, include a wrench or pliers in case you need to turn off utilities like your water and need a tool to do it. Dust masks or even a cotton t-shirt, bandana, or scarf will help you filter the air if the need arises. A battery-powered radio can help provide updates on current conditions and ways to get help. 
You might add in a whistle in case you need to signal for help, and access to a fire extinguisher is also a good idea. If you want to go the next step, plastic sheeting and duct tape are good to have to create a makeshift shelter in extreme situations. Additional practical items might include paper towels, a change of clothes for each person, rain gear, and a modest supply of cash. ATMs and credit card readers don't operate when the power is out. Personal hygiene items should include toilet paper, deodorants, cotton swabs, tissues, and diapers and wipes as needed. If water service is disrupted, having bags with ties that could be used for personal sanitation needs just might be necessary. Don't forget to include some cups and utensils for preparing and eating food items. Paper and pen or pencil allow you to take notes, play games, or keep a youngster busy and distracted. Playing cards or other portable games might help alleviate stress in a difficult situation. Sleeping bags or warm blankets for each member of the household will provide extra comfort and warmth. The full contents of your kit are completely up to you. There's a list with these recommendations and more at weather.gov. Having everything organized in one place means that there's no rushing to prepare when a severe weather watch or warning is issued. You're ready, you're safe, and you've got this. For additional weather safety tips and advice, also visit our website at powerhousetv.com. Every spring and fall, it's important to change the batteries in your smoke, carbon monoxide alarms, and natural gas leak detectors. Well, guess what time it is? Yep, get out those ladders or step stools and make sure you're doing all you can to keep your home and the people in it safe. It's important. In a recent report by the National Fire Protection Association, dead batteries are a major factor in smoke alarm failures. Once you freshen those batteries in each alarm, Give the unit a test to make sure the alarm is functioning well and producing a loud enough sound to alert you to danger and wake you up if you're sleeping. Typically, there's a small test button you can press to cause the alarm to sound. There are also products you can use to truly put the unit through its sensing paces. This spray product is just one example, and it's about $20 to purchase. Follow the instructions on the product to use it to activate the alarm and verify that it's working. This could be a good way to conduct a family drill. Sometimes after a battery change or your routine testing, you'll figure out that you need not just fresh batteries, but a fresh alarm unit. Most alarm units have a lifespan of about 8 to 10 years. There are a variety of alarm types available from basic to fully smart tech enabled. Megan, let's head in and take a look at a few. Let's do it. Smoke detectors are an essential safety item that every home should have. There are three basic types of sensors that smoke alarms typically have. Photoelectric, ionization, and dual. Photoelectric sensors use light to detect smoke, sounding the alarm when smoke particles in the air disrupt the beam of light in the sensor. Ionization sensors use radiation and an ionization chamber to detect smoke. This is helpful in detecting very small amounts of smoke in the air, such as in a flaming fire that's not very smoky. Dual sensors use both technologies and are considered among the safest smoke and fire detection devices. Detectors can be purchased individually or in multi-packs to connect as a system. Numerous online safety and consumer resources evaluate and rate alarms based on price, performance, features, and operational lifespan. Be sure to do a little research to make sure you're getting the right type and number of units for your space and layout. Basic single units can cost less than $30 each. Multiple unit packages with added capabilities or high-end units with smart tech features can sometimes run up to several hundred dollars, but can deliver whole house coverage or additional functions and even carbon monoxide detection. Carbon monoxide in your home can create a very dangerous situation for you and your family. Since it's colorless, odorless, and tasteless, the first warning you may have that there's a problem might be that someone in the household begins to feel unwell, exhibiting dizziness, headaches, nausea, or other symptoms similar to the flu. Prolonged exposure allows the oxygen in your blood to be replaced with carbon monoxide, leading to serious tissue damage or even death. And that's why it's important to have a CO detector with an alarm. 
Carbon monoxide may build up due to a malfunction in your furnace or an improperly vented appliance or engine. So having a detector with an alarm near your furnace, as well as another detector in or near your primary living and sleeping spaces, will allow you to be aware of the problem and get your family to fresh air and safety. Now, basic CO alarms are available in battery-operated, plug-in, or hardwired models, depending on your installation or your powering needs. Higher-end models can provide the dual function of smoke and fire detection, as well as carbon monoxide detection. Some even include a digital screen that shows you the CO level in your home at all times. Smart models run diagnostics, they sync with your home automation apps, and can provide direct text, voice, or sound alerts to your phone or your smart home communication device. A very basic battery-operated alarm may be priced at less than $15, and smart tech models can price out in roughly the $100 to $250 range. Most detectors last an average of about five years. One extra layer of protection you might consider for your home is a natural gas leak detector. While natural gas has scent added to make it detectable, a slow or minor leak may be difficult for the average nose to pick up. If your house is older or if you have gas appliances, an additional alarm like this can assist with early detection of a problem. A variety of models are available with prices starting around $25 and ranging up to $150 or more. With all home alarm systems, you'll get the best out of them with the right installation and maintenance. Start by testing the unit or check the batteries monthly. Put smoke detectors on every level of your home and CO detectors in high-risk areas like furnace rooms, bedrooms, and living areas. Combination units just may give you your best overall protection. Keep fresh batteries on hand. You can even set up recurring deliveries of batteries to make sure they are available and help you remember to change them out. Keep all detector units clean and free from dust, dirt, or debris. Keep detectors away from drafts to avoid disrupting their operation. Some allow you to connect multiple alarms so that all of them will sound in an emergency. Protecting your home and family with these basic detectors is a great way to invest in the safety of your powerhouse. If a storm knocks out power, many people rely on a gas-powered generator to keep their lights, refrigerators, and freezers running. We have with us today Jake Robbie from Robbie Hardware, and let's talk a little bit about generator safety in general. What are some of the dangers that people need to be aware of? Well, I think, Megan, the biggest thing is carbon monoxide, you know, is obviously a silent killer, uh, not to mention, you know, improper maintenance with a generator. Uh, dealing with it in, a, you know, in the middle of a rainstorm or something too can be a hazard to the customer. What we like to see is a generator that's put away from the home, not ran in a garage, not ran under a porch to where there's doors and, and windows there where carbon monoxide could enter the home. Not to mention they should have a carbon monoxide detector in the home in the event that anything was cycling in. You know, if a window's open, uh, these things can produce carbon monoxide, which can really hurt the homeowner. Right, and I know that uh, risk of electric shock is a big one and also fire hazard. Yeah, another big mistake homeowners make is refilling a generator while it's hot and running. Uh, quite often they overflow and they can catch, catch fire. So a generator should be completely shut down and the muffler cool before you add fuel to it and before starting it. Is it possible to overload a generator and is that dangerous to do? Well, I mean, their safety is built into most all generators, you know, that they're not going to allow it to exceed the opacity of the generator based on its size. The biggest thing for a homeowner is to not plug in too many appliances, get by with the things that you want, or get a whole home uh, interconnection system. Does that require a professional to assess what are my needs, what size do I need? I think the biggest thing a homeowner needs to assess when buying a generator is what are the have-tos. I mean, the sump pump, is that a must? Refrigerators, freezers, of course, you want TV, uh, at least lights in one room. If a person adds up all of the watts that they need and then buy a generator according to the, to the amount of energy that they require is the best way to size a generator. So really, it is good to have a professional involved to help you assess those things. Absolutely. How about general maintenance for people that already have a generator? That's another mistake that a homeowner generally does is in a storm situation, they buy a new generator. When the storm's over with and the power is restored, it goes into the garage and kind of forgotten about. Um, and it doesn't get pulled out for a year, two years, five years, and it does not run. 
A generator should have the oil changed in it um, immediately upon you know the storm being over with or the power outage being done. Um, should treat the gas and really pull it out of the garage once a uh, once a month or every other month and actually start it, run the engine, lubricates the engine, uh, as well as keeps the fuel fresh. You know, something else that we're talking about in this episode is home alarms and things like that, CO2 alarms and fire alarms, and it's no different than that, right? You have to remind yourself to take care of it. Absolutely, and that can be done, you know, when you change your smoke alarm batteries. We should also take a look at that generator to make sure that it's ready the next time it's needed. Now, obviously, this has been professionally installed. Is there anything about installation that we need to know about? Most common uh, people will just take regular drop cords and run to them appliances and plug them in, but they don't really have a good way to get the cord through the door and into the home. Well, then the door's cracked and we don't want carbon monoxide. So this is actually the safest setup to where this main breaker can be shut off. This then comes up and here's my generator breaker right here. Which, so you can't flip that unless it's off. That's absolutely right. So we don't have to worry about any back feeding onto the grid, which is a huge liability. Great. How much does it cost for something like this? Something like this can run as little as $400 to $700. That's a pretty good investment for people that already have generators to consider maybe a safer measure and way of doing things. Yeah, and you don't want to accept that liability of powering that line and hurting somebody that's out there trying to fix the lines. Well, we appreciate all this great information, and I'm going to toss to Pete, who's going to talk even more about back feeding. Thanks, Megan. Backfeeding is a hazard that occurs if you try to power the whole house wiring by plugging a portable generator into a wall outlet or by connecting it directly to your home's electrical panel. The textbook definition of backfeeding is a flow of electric energy in the reverse direction of a circuit's design from the circuit to the source. Installed generators have an automatic or manual transfer switch that makes sure that electricity flows only one direction from only one source, either the power grid or, when that's down, the generator. When the circuit that connects your house to the power grid is not shut off or bypassed via a transfer switch when using a portable generator, it's possible that the generator can send power backwards, backfeed it into the power lines and re-energize them. This unexpected energy flow could harm or electrocute people trying to repair what they think is a de-energized line. Also, if the power comes back on while the generator is still operating, two power sources are then connected to your home circuit, which strains the generator and the electrical panel, causing overheating and potentially a fire. Your home, your neighbors, and utility workers are all put at risk in a backfeeding situation. A transfer switch is the only way to safely power a full home circuit, and those need to be installed by a trained professional. A transfer switch is an electrical switch that switches a load between two sources. To safely operate a portable generator, you should plug the items you want to power directly into the generator with a properly rated extension cord. It's the safe way to generate temporary power for essential appliances and fixtures in your powerhouse. We've made sure you're safe. Now we'd like to make sure you're comfortable in a stormy situation. If a power outage happens in the heat of summer or the cold of winter, there are some simple things you can do to stay comfortable and safe while help is on the way. Let's start with a few basics to keep you safe. In a winter storm, no matter how cold it gets if your power is out, do not use your gas stove or grill to try to heat up your home. You run the risk of fire, inadvertent burns, or carbon monoxide poisoning. Instead, add some layers of clothing like sweaters, sweatshirts, or comfortable jackets. Use additional blankets to cover up and stay warm. Keep family and activities concentrated in the most insulated or interior rooms of the house to share and preserve warmth. Use your gas stove, if you have one, to make a warm drink or to heat water for a hot water bottle. Open your shades during the day, time to let sunshine warm the spaces it can. Close them at night or when it's cloudy to better insulate the windows and keep out the cold. In the summertime, staying comfortable without air conditioning can be challenging, but not impossible. If it's cooler outside than inside, consider enjoying your outside spaces, especially in the cool of the evenings and don't forget the bug spray. 
inside your house, close shades, blinds, or drapes during the heat of the day to prevent the sun from heating your home further. Take advantage of cool breezes by opening multiple windows to allow cross ventilation and air movement in your home, especially at night. Dress in lightweight, light colored clothes. Use a cloth soaked in cold water to place on your head or neck to relieve extreme heat. Stay hydrated and out of direct sunlight if possible. And like Megan mentioned, never use a propane or charcoal grill inside your home or garage. They deplete oxygen and create carbon monoxide, putting you and your family at risk. Alliant Energy works hard to keep the power flowing in all conditions, but outages do happen. The system is designed with smart meters that send a signal to notify Alliant Energy when the power is out. If you see downed power lines, have natural gas leaks, or experience another power emergency, call 1-800-ALLIANT. Visit AlliantEnergy.com outage to report non-emergency outages or to view outage maps in your area. You can see the cause, if known, and keep tabs on estimated restoration time. Patience and smart decisions will help keep you safe. Always stay away from any down lines, even if you think they are not energized. You can find even more tips on storm preparation on our website at PowerhouseTV.com. We hope you stay safe in your powerhouse in all types of weather. We hope you safely enjoyed this stormy edition of Powerhouse. We built the storm safety kit that every household needs. We checked out the latest in home safety alarms. We shared essential tips for safely operating a generator. And we explored the keys to staying comfortable when conditions aren't optimal. Visit PowerhouseTV.com for additional tips and information on storm preparedness and home safety. Stay safe and secure in your powerhouse.